In 1996 at St. Aloysius Hospital in Pennsylvania, a patient suffers a seizure and is treated immediately. Not much can be done and nurse Charles Cullen, the one that alerted the emergency, just stares at the patient in silence. Seven years later at Parkfield Memorial Hospital in New Jersey, nurse Amy Luffern treats Anna Martinez, an elderly woman with an adverse reaction to amoxicillin, who tells her that she has been married to her husband for only three years. Amy is sympathetic that the husband can't stay to take care of his wife on the night shift, so she tells him she'll let him stay there for the night if he can keep it in secret. After a while Amy is called by her boss, who scolds her for doing this, claiming that the hospital is not a hotel where people can stay freely. She also tells her about a new admission coming in, a guy with a good track record who can be very helpful during the shift. Amy now attends Holly, a coma patient to whom she tells things about her daily life. The hospital is unaware that Amy actually suffers from cardiomyopathy, and after finishing with Holly she has to sit to calm down a bit. She arrives home, where she pays the nanny for taking her daughters to school, feeling tired after the night shift. On a visit to the doctor Amy discovers that if she continues to exert herself, a fatal coronary incident could occur in just months. The next step is to stay calm long enough to get on the heart transplant waiting list. The doctor tells Amy that she must stop working, but she tells him that she needs health insurance and that she will not have a release fee unless she has been in the hospital for at least a year. At this the doctor can only advise her to tell her girls what they can do in the event of cardiac arrest. After the visit Amy is surprised at how expensive it was, revealing her financial struggle. On her way back to her shift Amy sees Charlie doing inventory, and introduces herself by asking him if he's been given the hospital tour yet. They start hitting it off early on, with Charlie mentioning that he's been to several hospitals and even having a good friend in common. He mentions to Amy the patients they got that night, including Anna. She introduces them to Charlie and the woman is given her first drink of water. Charlie tells them that he will be their Amy that night and that if they need anything they should just push a button and he will be right over. Both nurses share an egg salad from Amy and comment that they have two daughters each, but Charlie no longer lives with his because his ex moved six hours away. An alarm goes off for Amy but Charlie tells he'll help her with it, leaving Amy smiling alone. Returning home Amy finds herself at an argument between her oldest daughter Alex and the babysitter. Getting involved, her daughter mentions how she can't even have her mother by her side and leaves. While tending to Holly Amy suffers from her heart again, so she decides to get away and calm down before something serious happens, but is surprised by Charlie. He comforts her and helps her with breathing exercises, so Amy confesses to him about her cardiomyopathy and lack of health insurance. She asks Charlie not to reveal her secret and he asks how long until she has insurance. Amy tells him it's four months away, so in that time Charlie can help her so she won't be so burdened at work. They arrive at the hospital the next day to learn that Anna was unable to spend the night, and Amy is outraged to see that she was left abandoned in the room. Charlie confesses to her that he lost his mother when he was a child and at the hospital where she was treated her negligently, getting him interested in helping people in such conditions. Anna's husband talks to Amy while Charlie cleans up the body. At the end, Charlie stares at Anna's body without saying a single word. Seven weeks pass and detectives Tim Braun and Danny Baldwin show up at the hospital looking into the Anna Martinez case in particular. Hospital risk manager Linda Guerin appears before the detectives, and exposes to them how Anna's case was surrounded by unusual circumstances. When the detectives ask to know where Anna's body is, Linda tells them that the family cremated it weeks ago and that they still remain unaware of the woman's condition. The detectives assure them that they will investigate the situation and interview the staff, with Baldwin taking particular interest in the case. Charlie has now become close even with Amy's daughters, who become depressed when the babysitter arrives, meaning that Charlie and his mother will have to go to work. During their investigation, the detectives come across Charlie's name and his Pennsylvania background, and when they ask for information about him they are told that Charlie's folder has a posit saying Dijoxin. Charlie apparently received trespassing and harassment charges in 95 after slashing a co-worker's tires following their breakup, but the charges were later dropped. Baldwin knows something isn't right, as the hospital has turned Anna's case into something bigger than it's supposed to be, believing they're even covering up causes and evidences. At first they think it's about money, but there may be something darker going on. The hospital board calls the entire staff to a meeting to tell them how the police are investigating a particular case involving one of their patients. The hospital's attorney, Mr. Beatty tells the staff that he will be interviewing everyone and that patient discretion should be the number one priority. If anyone decides to talk to the police without having someone from the hospital's administrative staff present, they may even lose their job. Baldwin and Braun talk to the prosecutor, who tells them that Linda should be present at the interviews and that they should not specifically ask about medications, something the detectives are not happy about. Baldwin doesn't understand why they should investigate something that the hospital keeps so confidential, but the prosecutor tells them they should still do it. Amy is seen by Linda and the detectives for the interview, confessing that Anna was her patient and that her loss was also very sudden. Linda is called out and the detectives take the opportunity to ask Amy about some deviation in Anna's condition, and she notes how her blood sugar values were wrong. She explains that the insulin in her system wasn't made for her body, so someone had to give it to her from outside. That would result in a double medication error, which is unusual and may have been the cause of Anna's loss. 
Upon Linda's return Amy is asked about her co-workers, specifically Charlie but Amy tells her that when Anna's situation happened it was the day shift, and Charlie and she work at night. Amy defends Charlie by praising what a good nurse he is and leaves. Now Amy is in the middle of a complication with one of the patients and it overexerts her heart to the point of almost fainting. Charlie finds her out of the way and gives her a pill using his nurse code at the hospital's computer, sitting down next to her. She says that he can be fired for using hospital medication without permission, but he tells her that he knows how to break the system so no one will notice. After another consultation with the cardiologist, Charlie tells Amy that she should talk to her daughters in case the worst happens, but Amy is scared as her daughters have no one else to be with. Charlie tries to cheer her up by telling her that there are only two months left before she can have insurance, so Amy decides to talk to Alex to explain the situation. The detectives continue investigating Charlie and when they try to talk to the Aloysius Hospital's attorney, he tells them that their staff's information is strictly confidential. They are both frustrated that every time they try to approach Charlie, there is always someone who has his back. At that they receive a package from Parkfield Memorial Hospital's internal investigation. Baldwin talks to Linda and asks for medication reports obtained through the hospital's internal system, but she tells him that the reports are only stored for up to four weeks. However after some investigation Baldwin believes that Linda is hiding evidence, but she prefers to set the matter aside and ends the conversation. At this Baldwin loses his temper and yells her to sit down, he calms down and berates Linda for what she is doing. Amy sees a new patient named Kelly, whose husband admits to bringing her baby Vanessa to the hospital, but Amy lets it go. Charlie shows up and tells her there's a purple coat, which means the pizza arrived. Charlie tells Amy more about his crazy ex-wife, who tries to turn his daughters against him. Detective Baldwin tells his partner that he had access to Anna Martinez's medication records and noticed how there was not only insulin on it, but dejoxin as well. At that his boss appears and mentions how they are both banned from the case because of Baldwin's behavior toward Linda. When the detectives complain, their boss tells them that since they don't have a body to investigate, they simply don't have enough evidence to proceed. Amy sees that Kelly can't remember her own baby's name, so she begins to notice that Kelly is starting to faint. She calls Kelly's husband to come as soon as possible, notifying him of the unexpected. While checking the patient's condition Amy sees that Kelly has insulin in her system, rushing to attend to her as she convulses. Unfortunately when her husband arrives Amy gives him the bad news, and he gives her baby Vanessa so he can see Kelly one last time. The next morning the detectives show up at Amy's house, and she tells them right away that she has nothing to do with Kelly's case. They are puzzled as they don't know what she is talking about, so they deduce that there was another victim. Amy knows she screwed it up and they start asking her whether Charlie was involved. They tell her that Charlie has been to nine different hospitals and that no one wants to talk about him, so he is their prime suspect. They give Amy their card and leave, asking her to contact if anything happens. Amy becomes suspicious so she meets with Lori Lucas, the mutual friend she has with Charlie. She asks Lori about him and her friend becomes concerned, mentioning that there was a rumor that Charlie had overdosed a patient, giving extra insulin. She tells Amy about how they used to have several calls each night, but after Charlie left, it was down to just one call a month. This disturbs Amy who goes to the hospital storerooms and discovers how the fourth bags have indeed been altered. Upon discovering this she faints and is taken to the ED, where she is cared for by Charlie. She asks to leave and Charlie drives her home, insisting that he can stay at her house if necessary. Amy tries to rush home, but Charlie doesn't let her get out of the car so easily, reminding her that she is only a month away from getting insurance. They say goodbye and the next day she goes to tell the detectives what happened off the record. They ask her if the dejoxin can be in the fourth bags undetected, and Amy tells them that it can, being able to fulminate a person even within a day of difference. When they show Amy the drug log in the internal system she is surprised to see how little information there is, revealing that since it is a machine, every record is stored from its very start. She offers to withdraw Charlie's record so that she can get the evidence from Anna's case. However she is told that it is not feasible as Anna was cremated and they need a body to investigate, so Amy thinks to ask Kelly's husband. Kelly is dug up and her husband decides not to watch because of how hard the situation is. Meanwhile Amy replaces an four bag from another one Charlie placed on a patient, as well as looking up Charlie's records in the system that show he indeed did withdraw insulin and dejoxin. Amy and the detectives manage to put the puzzle together and present it to the chief, only there is one small problem. Amy explains that Charlie has a method of getting the system to detect a medication cancellation, showing as if nothing was ever withdrawn. Since it is not evidenced in the record, they really have no proof that Charlie did that no matter how much proof there already is. Charlie is interviewed by Linda and Mr. Beatty, who ask him a series of questions about his previous employment. Seeing that the data doesn't match what Charlie says, they have no choice but to let him go, so he signs his dismissal and leaves. This news quickly reaches the detectives' offices, where they say the cycle is repeating itself again, blaming the prosecutor for not having done anything at the time. When Amy returns home she finds that Charlie is also there with her daughters. She tells the girls to go to their room right away so she can talk to Charlie, who tells her that he feels bad about all the misfortunes that have been happening in his life. He offers to keep helping her even if it means babysitting the girls, but she tells him she'd rather have some time alone with her daughters because of the tense family situation they've had lately. 
Charlie takes it surprisingly well by emphasizing what a good mother Amy is. He tells her that everything will be fine and leaves, with Amy sitting down to cry alone. The next day Amy calls Charlie from the detective station with a recorded call and apologizes for her behavior the day before. The two arrange to meet for lunch on Saturday, where she will be wired to track everything. Upon arrival Amy learns that Charlie will be starting a new job at Elmsworth Hospital and he tells her he doesn't want to talk about what happened in Parkfield. She asks him if it's because the rumors going around are in fact true, and when she tries to grab him for support Charlie abruptly pulls his hand away. Charlie tries to change the subject but Amy won't let him, looking for a confession from him. He just walks away saying he has to go to his new job, without being able to conclude with a confession. The detectives show up and tell Amy that they will try to triangulate Charlie on the way to Elmsworth, which they manage to do so they can arrest him. During their interrogation they question Charlie about his medical malpractice, noting that he only did what he did to women, perhaps relating it to his ex-wife or his mother. Charlie breaks down and refuses to continue the conversation, presenting a nervous tick that becomes increasingly violent, demonstrating his poor mental stability. Baldwin tells Amy that in light of not being able to get a statement, they are forced to release Charlie. Amy goes to visit Charlie in the interrogation room, noticing him upset. Charlie asks her to leave, but instead she gives him her sweater and reminds him how fond she was of him for all the support he gave her. He tells her that this was what he always wanted to do and when asking what to do now she tells him to tell the truth, but he just says he already did. She asks him to at least give her the names of the people affected throughout his work and he starts reciting some names. When Amy questions him why he did that, Charlie just says that it's because they never stopped him. The film concludes by showing that the real Charles Cullen pleaded guilty to 29 cases to avoid the heaviest sentence, but it's believed that the number of his victims may well scale up to 400 patients. To this day he is yet to explain the reasons why he did so, and won't be eligible for parole until 2403. While Amy was able to have her heart transplant and currently lives with her daughters and grandchildren in Florida, keeping her job as a good nurse.